Hi, hello. I got distracted by music I'm listening to. Let me know if it's too loud. Actually, I might just turn it a wee little bit down anyways. Yes. Hi, hello. It's a Friday review thing I was talking about. Why? Because I can. Um... I tried to... Game capture... Um... PowerPoint, but you know, it, it... Oh wait. Can I game capture that? No, apparently it does not game capture that. Rude. Wait, slideshow. There we go. Nope, it doesn't. So it doesn't do game capture. So this is a display. Anyways, hi, hello, it's me. Um, very first Friday review. Just something chill. I hope my minions are doing okay. If you're afraid of snakes, don't come in here. Also, I need to... In... There we go. There we go. Oh, we have a pin message. I, I, I'm getting better at that. Anyways, yes. Think of you, Mark, you can get a quick lesson on snakes. And no, I am not an expert. I just really like snakes. I'm not a herpetologist. I just appreciate them. So yeah. Anyways, I should probably go visible on Discord just for a little while. There we go. Snakes and more snakes. But yeah, I like snakes. They are, they are, they're good. They're danger noodles, slither strings, nope ropes, all that. There's all sorts of them. Why is there all sorts of them? Just because there is. Also, it, this isn't going to be like the longer stream, which is great for me because uh, I am having heart trouble problems right now. So um, if I seem a little fatigued, it's because I am. I am just so tired. <laughs> Not on you guys, though. I have turned off shoutouts for this, though. You can still see the shoutout in the chat, but there will not be an actual shoutout screen at the bottom. So, yeah. Why do I like snakes? Well, yes. Necessary predators that can help keep certain pests down are just as neat as bats, frogs, birds, and other pest eaters. What kind of pests to eat? Well, some snakes will eat insects. Some snakes will eat other snakes. Um... Yeah, they eat all sorts of things, and they are a necessary part of the food chain. And I do think they look really neat. I guess before you ask anything, this is a PowerPoint presentation. Why? Because I am not very good at making videos, so like, I'll have to deal with this. These are the country snakes are native to. Also, if you want a um, Google document with all of the links to ever all the pictures and all the articles and stuff that I have uh, procured stuff from I will be adding that to my YouTube um, credits list um, like it says majority of the world has some kind of snake species except New Zealand Ireland Iceland Greenland and Antarctica Iceland Greenland and Antarctica are pretty self-explanatory New Zealand I don't I think it's because it's so far south um, Ireland, I, I don't think ever had snakes. Um, I did add a note that St. Patrick did not drive the snakes from Ireland. That, that was a, 
Christian slash Catholic term of referring to the pagans. St. Patrick drove the pagans out of Ireland, not actual snakes. These are the lists we're picking from. Uh, these are their... Not genus names. Ah, uh, fuck. One moment. Yes, they're, they're family names. Uh, if you notice down at the bottom, it says similar families and others. Or smaller families and others. Yeah, a couple of them are smaller families. Uh, some of them are just a, a genus of some of the bigger ones. But they don't exactly like fall completely into the family. But yes, we have Cloberdae, Elapidae, Viperidae, Pythonidae, Boeidae, and of course the smaller families and others. For Cloberdae, largest snake family. They have almost 250 different genuses of snakes within that family. That It's huge. Cloberdae, that is like one of the, the biggest species of snakes, like the family of snakes. A, a lot of snakes are Cloberdae. So we have to like make this list pretty, pretty compact. Otherwise, we would be here for a while. Found every continent except those mentioned. Mostly harmless and shy. They will leave you alone. Biggest majority are non-venomous. Or their bites really don't do much to us. They, they're just painful, stingy bites that like might make you a little ill, but they're not deadly. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule. Uh, there's always exceptions to the rule. There's things like being allergic. Even being allergic to anti-venom. And the ones that are potentially harmful to humans are a much, much smaller chunk of the family. Majority of them, they're not going to hurt you. It's still going to fucking hurt when they bite you, but like... What doesn't hurt? When you've got sharp fangs. We are starting out with the mock or false cobra, aka hood malopo. Malopolo, yeah. Uh, this one I didn't, I accidentally didn't put down the taxonomical name on it. I did list where they all are. So, our false cobra is in North Africa and Middle East. And it does have a hood that it can flare up. That's why it's called the false cobra. We've got the Barrowman bamboo snake. I am not going to try and pronounce some of these taxonomical names. But it exists in Malaysia. As you see, it's got, this, it's got a slight hood. It's got a very pretty brownish coloring. The Barrowman bamboo snake. I like it. It's cute. Then we have the Keeled Vine snake. It exists in the Western Ghats of India. I, this little guy's on there because look at it. It's just, it's so cute. How can you not look at that and be like, oh, that's fucking cute. Look at that nose. Look at those eyes. Look at that scale. Those scales, like the black and the white on the green. That, that's so pretty. Then we have, let's call it the elegant bronze back. It's in southern Thailand, peninsula Malaysia, Sumatra, Borneo, and Java. It is a very pretty golden color. Like, if you look it up, it's got, like, very pretty bronzes and golds all over it. The red-eyed vine snake. Uh, if... Can I go back to the previous slide? Um... To, so, the killed vine snake is the Prohatula. So, the red-eyed vine snake and the one from the previous slide are not... They're cousins. They're not related related. They're not like brother sister type species. They, they, they're more like distant cousins. But that one exists in Vietnam. And, and just like the, the keelide. It, it's so cute. Look at it. It's it's so derby looking. Up top we got the Sinharaja tree snake. Which if you look at it. It looks kind of like a coral snake. But it is not... I think it might have a slight venom, but it is not, like, super dangerous. Let me double check that, because, like, there, there's the whole 
hole in black coral snakes that I will go into. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's non-venomous, but it is a canopy developing snake, so you're probably not going to see it unless you get into the trees. And at that point, why do you want to be in the trees? Don't, don't go into the trees with snakes. There, there are several arboreal species of snakes. Stay the fuck out of trees. Then we have Northern Speckled Racer. That one exists in Central America and uh, very south of Texas, like along the Rio Grande. It's just look at it, those colors. This is so pretty. It's so cute. We have the Western Hognose. Um, it's also known as the Dusky or the Mexican Hognose and it exists in North America. What I love about hognose is the fact that they have different colorings. You can get brown, white, black, gray, lavender. And oh my god, I I forgot to link to th this video, but um hognoses are Oh god, they're famous for playing dead. Hognoses want nothing to do with do with people. They they will leave people alone. If you pick up a hognose, which you don't pick up snakes. Um, they will pretend to be dead. And they think that if they pretend to be dead, you will have no interest in them. Oh, have fun lurking. It is going. I just started my presentation on snakes. I absolutely love snakes. I hope you're not afraid of them. Uh, otherwise, why would you be in here? Well, yeah, we, we are on... We are in Kuluber Day right now, so we're, so we're talking about the biggest family. These are just like, these are not all of them. I'm not going to cover all 250 species of Kuluber Day. I'm just covering ones that I like. Like the Western Hognose, that, the, the, the little dudes, it's, it's adorable. Look up Western Hognoses playing dead and, and you'll have a grand old time watching them. They just look so, so derpy. And if you want to see a really pretty coloring, I recommend looking up the Lavender Hognose. That is such a pretty color on a snake. Now we're going to move on down to the Tamaulipan or Mexican milk snake. Milk snakes are non-venomous, but they look a lot like what's called a coral snake. There is a poem that go that says, Red on yellow kills a fellow, red on black, you're okay, Jack. Which if you look at the milk snake, it's red on black. And if we go back, I think it's... Yes, this, this Sinharaja tree snake, it's red on black. It is non-venomous. It's not going to hurt you. It's The bite's still going to hurt, no matter what. It, I mean, if you get bitten by something with super, super sharp fangs, it's going to hurt. There is a guy who actually has a pain scale of the most um, painful bites and stings. See, he probably has like a milk snake on there. But they, they, they usually avoid people. Milk snakes, they don't want anything to do with you. So yeah, if you see red on black, you're okay. It's not gonna go, it's not gonna do anything. But they, yeah, they are spread across Mexico, parts of Central America, and Texas. Oh, thank you for the follow. Usually I have like animations, but like, I'm trying to cut down on how much there is all across the screen. <laughs> Next we have what's called long nose whip snake. Just like the, the keel eyed and the red eyed. It's, it's got, it's got the little cute derby face. And these ones are in Sri Lanka. They are, um, what I didn't mention is that those three, they're cousins and they are all arboreal species. They tend to hang out in trees. A lot of the Kuluberdae tend to like to hang out in trees. Um, at the bottom, left, right. I know my directions. We have a rainbow snake. It's so cute. They're along the coastal plains of the southeastern U.S. They are also non-venomous. Still, don't, don't mess with the snakes. Don't, don't mess with the snakes. And there's not a lot in the Kluber Day that I, I picked out. And like, I pick out um, winners for each category that like I absolutely adore of all the snakes that I've displayed. And so the next slide is going to show off which one I love to, from the Kluber Day. Which happens to be the Northern Speckled Eraser. Mostly because it's it's a rainbow. If you look at the Northern Speckled Eraser, you can see so many beautiful colors on it. 
It is a cute little rainbow snake and I adore it. And also, I would love to meet one, like IRL wise. But this is not a species I think anyone keeps as a pet and you shouldn't. There's several species of snakes you shouldn't be keeping as pets anyways. I need to remember to hydrate. I'm going to be talking a lot. From the Colubra day, we move on to a lap day. These snakes are known for having permanently erect fangs, meaning they cannot retract them like other snake species. Uh, only one genus of Elapidae is non-venomous. A lot of these have neck flaps, so cobras. Yeah, think cobras. They tend to be in warmer places, so tropical, subtropical. They do have marine forms. Uh, there is several Elapidae that are very, very good at swimming. You will not be able to outswim them. Um, and they also have neurotoxic venom. A lot of them do. Neurotoxic venoms destroy nerve tissue. And it is permanent damage. Meaning if you get bit by one of these, the area where you get bit has damage. Yeah, sure. You can regrow some nerve tissue, but like the original tissue that was there is gone. It, it, it's, it's bad. You don't want to get bit by these guys. But some of them have some of the prettiest colors. So, we're starting out with the olive sea snake. It exists in the Indo-Pacific. This one of those that's actually very good at swimming. Uh, like, leave it alone. If you see one coming towards you, um, what some sea snakes do... During mating season, they will get so worked up that they will actually approach people because they're like, Oh, oh, is this something I can mate with? And that's how some bites happen. So if you see a snake coming towards you in the water, get your limbs away from the water if you can. If you're like on a surfboard, that's going to be a little harder. But yeah, um, they're, they're going to bite you once they realize you're not the lady they're going for. But then again, they're in the Indo-Pacific. So like they're in the western warmer waters and the indian ocean which is also generally warmer waters than majority of pacific is they're also known as golden sea snakes or the olive brown sea snakes uh, i just went with the olive sea snake name a lot of these will actually have other names uh so if they have several names i'll list those uh the next snake of that is the red-headed crate it exists in malaysia singapore thailand south india and a Sumatran area of Indonesia. Look at that thing. It is, it is a beautiful, beautiful kind of cobalt blue with a red head and a red tail tip. It actually falls into a um, genus that has several similar looking snakes, but they all are different in like small little ways. I am not a herpetologist, so I can't tell you how they figured out how they're all different in smaller, different ways. Probably DNA testing and such. Um, if you see one of these, it, like, like, like most sea snakes, it's, stay away from them. Next in the list is an Australian very, very deadly nope rope. The Desert Death Adder. I love the Desert Death Adder. It is not the most interesting looking snake. Oh boy, oh boy, is it fast. It is a very fast striker. Adders do not have any warnings except like a hiss. So like unlike rattlesnakes, rattlesnakes let you know if you're getting too close. Death adders will just bite you. They'll just straight up bite you. Um, some of the Elapidae family are somewhat aggressive, but it's usually during mating season majority of the time. So like... If you see a snake, just, just don't touch it. Uh, the bee bronze coral snake. It is one of the non-venomous ones, and you can tell, red on black. It is one of the smaller ones. Exists in India, and this one is uh, one of the snake eaters. It will, of course, eat insects. It'll eat birds and stuff. It is one of the, one of the snake eating snakes. Um... A snake that I did not include in this, just because it's not the most interesting looking snake, is California King Cobra. California King Cobras will eat other snakes. And they are gigantic. 
and they 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 certainly they certainly deserve the name king cobra next is the ring cows ring cows are one of the ones that have flaps on them uh, they exist in southern africa and they are yeah the ring neck spitting cobra they will spit at you if you've ever watched like um like shows about tribes in africa where like they think it's an honor if you get spit on by a cobra. This usually thinks like a ring cow that's spit at them. I think this also type of snake where Steve Irwin in one of the episodes way back when. Steve Irwin has been dead for a long time now. He got spit at. But the thing is he was wearing sunglasses so it wouldn't get into his eyes. Because it can't blind you. The red snake. A naped snake. Red snake snake. <laughs> Red Nape Snake is next. I like the name Farina Diadema. My favorite Genshin, one of my favorite Genshin characters is Farina, so I love the name. They exist in Australia. They're tiny. Like they, they're one of the thinner ones, like the Bronze Coral Snake. They're they're one of the smaller ones. It's mostly an insect eater, but still, don't 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 mess with it. It's just because it looks cute and tiny. And it's named Red Nape because like if you see the black on their head is broken up by like a little bit of red. That's where the nape of the neck is on a snake. So red nape snake. Or as my brain called it, the red snape snake. It's fitting. Now we are going on to one of the more deadlier ones of the Alavidae. And that is the Eastern Green Mamba. It exists in the coastal regions of Southern Africa. And it's one of the first ones on the list with a combo neurotoxic and cardiotoxic bite. Neurotoxic, of course destroys um uh, neuro neuro tissue nerve tissue but cardiotoxic affects the heart it's by can induce a heart attack basically and kill heart tissue so this is one of those snakes that if you get bitten by it, you want to get to the hospital immediately to save as much of your tissue as possible is also just the most stunning, stunning, stunning bright, bright green color. And yes, it actually is that bright green color. That is not just like somebody upping the opacity and all and the gamma and all that. It is a beautiful green color. Next we have the Boom Slang. Uh, if you have read like Harry Potter books or other wizard books, they, they're talking about like the Boom Slang skins and stuff. This is the snake they're talking about. It's adorable. Look at the look at the black and green. It's it's just cute, and it's got a smaller head than most of the other snakes in this uh, family do. It's so cute, and it has a hemotoxic bite, meaning that it affects the blood. It is one of those snakes that once it bites you, um, I have seen a video of it. It is wild, but like they put some of the venom into a dish of blood, and it's sort of congealing like pudding. So like literally it will turn your blood into like a pudding like substance which slows down your blood flow and that's kind of how it would kill. It's terrifying to think about, but you know. Oh well, let me snooze this ad. Yep. And next after that we have oh one of my more favorite ones of the, of the family. The Black Mamba. The Black Mamba has so many stories about it, about like how fast it kills and stuff like that. Um, it also exists in Sub-Saharan Africa, like the Green Mamba. Uh, the reason it can be so deadly is it has a very, very unique combo of toxins. They tested the proteins and toxins and they found so many things in the toxins that like it, it can't even really be listed they there's like cardiotoxins there's hemotoxins there's neurotoxins there's dendrotoxins it just it it's kind of the komodo dragon of snakes except the komodo dragon kills you with its bacterial laced bite and the black bomba kills you with a bite that starts affecting you in 10 minutes. And within 45 minutes, most people collapse and go like comatose. Um, if it's not treated with antivenom or not treated in general, within 7 to 15 hours, you're going to die. It just it depends on how much venom dose was given, uh, given, where you were bitten and all that, and how fast you were treated. That's why it's considered one of the deadlier snakes. It... 
also is not small. That that is like two or three feet. So it, it's not exactly a small snake. They do try and stay away from people though, but if you get too close to it, it, it it's it will bite you. Or at least try to. These are these are lunging type snake. I love it because it, it looks really elegant. And against the sands of sub-Saharan Africa, it looks like a solid black. Because like you've got the really pretty reddish sands, it looks black. And that's one of the reasons it's called the Black Mamba. It it's it's a very fascinating snake. After this, we have the Samar Cobra, which, yes, it is that very, very pretty yellow color. It exists in Visaya and the Mindanao Islands of the Philippines. It, like all cobras, it, it can spit, it can bite. It is just, it's so pretty. That's one of the reasons I put it on, on the snakes I like list. It's so pretty. And also my husband suggested this category, and he's even more into snakes than I am. He straight up watches just snake videos. A lot of these are just like snakes that he was just like, yeah, put them on the list. So, so I did. And so we also have after that the black neck spitting cobra, which is a sub-Saharan African snake. It is a spitter, like the ring calls are. It is bigger than a ring call though. And as you've noticed, it's instead of having like white and yellows and uh, black and red on it like the ring call does this one is just a straight up gray which oh during fire season and then like all the grass being like burnt and stuff this thing would be very hard to see but yeah it's i believe it is bigger than the samar cobra so it, it's it's not small some of these cobras get huge and Next slide is the one that I picked as the win winner of this category because like I didn't I didn't include a lot of them. This also this the Alapidae family is not small. Now I didn't want to be here for hours just talking about nothing with snakes. I could man one of these days I will do the same the same exact thing but with sharks because I love sharks so much. So it's just one of the things I love. Snakes are one of the things I love. But yeah, for a lapidae, I went with the boom slang. It's how can you not? It's so cute. Yes, it's venomous. Yes, it can turn your blood into uh, like pudding. But it's cute. Look at this. Look at this little guy. Wouldn't you want to go up to it and just kind of boop its snoot? Next category we're going into is by Paraday. These are vipers and pit vipers. Vipers and pit vipers are different. And like, I have a little exp explanation, but they have long hinged fangs. Uh, they have some of the deeper bites and they can retract those fangs. So like, you don't even see them. And then next thing you know, you, you got bit. There's three subfamilies recognized, so there's not a lot of them. And they are named, or they, they give live birth. Unlike the other snakes, all who lay eggs, Viperidae all give live birth. Meaning that they, they there's tiny little snakes right away. They don't have to wait for an egg to hatch. And the term for that is Viviparity. I say Viviparity. The, the, VV parody, but it comes out of a parody when I say it. Um, their venom takes longer to immobilize prey, making vipers having to hunt down the prey they have bitten. So like, vipers will bite, and then they follow. If it's something that they eat, if it's like a huge like a deer or something, they're not gonna follow that. But if it's their usual prey, they bite, then follow, and wait. Now the special little family pit vipers they have a specialized organ near their nostrils which can sense heat given off by warm-blooded animals and for pit vipers they all have like it all looks different like a couple of them can actually raise the things by their nostrils others have like deeper um nostril cavities it just depends on the pit viper you're talking about oh whoa. Hi, Melty G Fox. 
you don't mind snakes. Well, yeah. First three by Paraday on the list. First one is a golden lance head. Exists in Brazil. It is a very pretty kind of green, creamish beige color. And it does have a very lance-like head. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a good picture of its head. Hello. Oh, and then my Fitbit goes off. I like the golden lance heads. Um, all the snakes in the vipers and um, yeah, in the viperidase are all lunging snakes. They don't spit. None of them can spit. They all lunge. So having the name lance head, not only is it fitting, but like you, you kind of lunge with a lance to, to get a hit in. So it fits. After that is the very pretty green bamboo pit viper. It's also known as green Indian green pit viper or common green pit viper. Why did I put put? Wow, I should have spell checked this before I put this up. You know, whatever. And it exists in southern and northeastern India. So this this one has a bit of a spread. India is not a small place. Uh, as far as I know, this one likes to hang out in trees. But there's several of the vipers that are um, arboreals. A lot of them though stay on the ground because they are heavier. Uh, next we have the ashy pit viper, also known as the flat nose pit viper. This is the second pit viper in a category. If you look uh, at its nose, right where its tongue is, you can see that it has like little ridges. Which, uh, can I? Oops. Previous slide. Uh, can I? Can I make that picture? No, I can't make that picture bigger in this mode. But yeah, they can act, they actually can raise theirs just a little. It's not a very big raising. But yeah, look at that. It's it's a very pretty brown with kind of like the reddish spots on it. Absolutely love it. Next we have the hump nose viper, which the hump nose is it's it's got that lance head, kind of like the golden lance head, except um when you look at the pictures of the hump nose viper. It is so kind of derpy looking with its little lance head. It does not fit on its body. It's so awkward looking. Kind of looks like a spade. And I love its taxonomical name of Hypnale Hypnale. And exists in India and Sri Lanka. Hypnale Hypnale. I actually had that stuck in my head after I put that in there for a while. Uh, it's this really pretty red color with these black spots. It, it's cute looking. Some of them are more muted colors. But I think the more muted colors might be the females compared to males. Like, it, it, I, th I think they have like a gender difference, but like, it seems like the females might just be lighter. But either way, they're venomous. Don't touch them. Then after that, we have the pygmy rattlesnake. It exists in the southeastern U.S. It, it's one of our first ones on the list where it actually rattles to let you know it's there. And look at that coloring. It's really pretty. The blues and the reds. It's very pretty. And true to its name, it is actually one of the smaller vipers. It, it's, it's a tiny baby. After that, yes, this one has a big section because I actually have a story to tell about the cotton mouth. Like a personal story. Uh, two personal stories about the cotton mouth. Um, first, though, it exists in the southeastern U.S., it is semi-aquatic. They can't swim. They are also known as the northern cottonmouth, the water moccasin, swamp moccasin, black moccasin, or just viper. Along with a total of 58 common names. This snake has more names than Snoop Dogg has gone through. It, it It is known as so many different things, depending on, like, who are you talking to. Cottonmouths have broad, dark stripes. So, if you see one of these and you see thin stripes, that's a copperhead. And uh, the broad, dark stripes on the side of its head. So, that's one way you can tell the difference between a copperhead and a cottonmouth. Both are equally venomous. Well, yeah. Um... I was introduced to this snake as being called a water moccasin. And I went to Georgia one year and we were we were walking around in a foresty area with like this little creek. And I was told, watch out for the water moccasins. 
I didn't understand what they meant. The only moccasin I knew was the shoe. And so I got very confused. I'm like, well, what's a water moccasin? And they're like, oh, it's a snake, but, but it, it's, it's venomous. You don't want to get bitten by it. You're going to end up in the ER. And I'm like, okay. So I'm just casually walking with, with the people at the time and I kick a rock. And next thing I know, I see something moving and about 10 feet in front of me, there's this big ass snake. At first it starts moving towards us a little because I think it thought the rock was like a snake or something or like a rat or something. And then it suddenly just like whips around and goes away. Uh, it, it, I did not realize that um, at the time that water moccasins don't approach things that they can't eat like people. But like, I was so close to that snake and I didn't see it because it was perfectly blended into the dirt. I didn't even see the black stripes or anything until it moved. So like, I, I, I was a little too close for comfort to the water moccasin without even realizing it. I, I would have literally stepped on it had it not moved. It was that close to me. It was in my way. Uh, another story. Um, we have a snake up here in Washington that we call a cottonmouth, but I think it might be a copperhead. But like... I go to the Tri-City area, and my uncle gets told there's a snake outside the house. I, I, I didn't see the snake. I didn't realize it was over by the, the horse trough. And what he does is he just casually picks it up by its tail and whips it a few times until it stops moving. Now at the time, I was like, what is he whipping? And I got told later on that that, that, that's what's, that, that, that was a snake. And then I got upset because he killed it just because it was there and if for some reason every time my family members kill a snake they, they they take it over to the water drainage system and they drop it in there and i to this day still do not understand why they would do that now that's where the water meter is what well, what if the people that like check the water meters come up pop open that lid and they see a dead snake in there isn't that messed up i never understood why, why my family did that but it's apparently a thing they did. Like, why not just throw the snake into the garbage can at that point? Or leave it in nature. Let something eat it. it it's something I never understood. But yeah, those, those are my stories about dealing with cottonmouth and a possible copperhead. I still love them, though. They're still great snakes. They're still very pretty. Next, we got the Mexican palm pit viper. And true to say, they exist in Mexico, and they are one of the smaller pit vipers. It's a gorgeous green color. Just, just look at that. And its eyes are green, so like it almost perfectly blends into their skin in general. It's so pretty. Underneath that, we got the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. This one is the Southeastern U.S. It is the heaviest snake in the Viparidae. And it, uh, it does have a cousin up here in Washington called the Western Diamondback. I have come across, or I have been way too close to, to a rattlesnake. Uh, just like, God, like 15 years ago, I got way too close to a rattlesnake. Uh, I was walking around in the forest up, up in Washington, up in Northern Washington. And all I hear is this, and I'm like, the fuck is that noise? And it took me a moment to realize that that's the same exact noise as the dried rattlesnake rattle that my opa had. And so I was like, nope, not going that way. So so we, we turned around and we walked away because um, up where we were, it would have taken an hour and a half to get to a hospital. The nearest hospital would have been like way too far away if we'd gotten bitten. And um, people don't usually carry antivenom with them when they go up into the forest because not a lot of people realize that there's things in the forest that can bite you that can really hurt like we got black widows up here and, and we got the occasionally bites people hobo spider next we have the sumatran pit viper it exists in 
tropical forests in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand, and they are an arboreal species. So, unless you're climbing up in the trees or it just happens to fall on you, you're not generally going to meet up with this snake. It is a very gorgeous green and black. It blends in very well into its surroundings. All the ones that are like bright green tend to live in like treetops where they easily blend in with the foliage up there. It is, it is so pretty. It's not one of those that can raise up, or no, no, it is one of those that can raise up its nose a bit to sense heat. And it's cute. At least to me, it's cute. Under that, we have the Hua Hua Mantlan rattlesnake. It took me a while to to say, <laughs> say that one correctly the first time I saw it because I saw, I saw it on like the human man rattlesnake. No, it's the Hua Mantlan rattlesnake. And it's one of those that exists in Mexico. It's a, as you see, it's a like kind of a, more of a brown color compared to Eastern Diamondback. The Eastern Diamondback tends to live around rocks, so its coloring is better suited for rocks. Whereas the one in, in Mexico, very perfect coloring for the rocks and foliage there. And also it has, it's, it's nice little rattle. You hear a rattle back away. Don't mess with the rattle. Then we are moving on to the spiny bush viper. Look at that pretty little thing. It's also known as the rough scale bush viper, the spiny bush viper, and the hairy bush viper. There is several different colorings of it, so if you want to see all sorts of different colorings of it, I recommend looking up the spiny bush viper. It has some of the prettiest colors for a viper. It also has that like big expressive eye and just it's so pretty and it lives in Central America so I would never actually meet one so like uh be careful if you go down to places like uh Honduras and stuff like that it, it may just be up in the trees under that we have the Saharan horn viper exists in Northern Africa parts of the Arabian Peninsula and Levant as you see, it's got horns. It's one of the few vipers that does have horns. Um, I guess you could say it, it, it kind of looks like a devil, but it's also cute. And it also has one of those uh, repeating names uh, of Sarastes Sarastes. That also got stuck in my head just like the Hypnoele. Hypnoele. Now I can't even say it. My brain is just, all, my brain is all about the vipers right now not no longer in the Alapidae family it's all the vipers right now hit nailey hit nailey there you go next we have the Indonesian pit viper exists in Java and Lesser Sunda Islands also known as the Lesser Sunda Island pit viper the Sunda white lipped pit viper and the red tailed pit viper there's so many pretty colors, like the blue one that's that's below. It actually has a red tail tip. We just can't see the red tail tip, and I believe the green one up there also. Oh no, the green one doesn't have a red tail tip, but like they come in blues and greens, um, also more golden colors. So there's different color variations to the snake. All very pretty. Absolutely love them. Next slide, we have the Mangshan Pit Viper. It's it's so cool looking. Look at that thing. It also has like the most kind of squat head. It I just realized the hip nailer hip nailer is a pit viper. It's the one with the with the dorky dorky spade shaped head. It also has a spade shaped head. They exist in the Huna and Guangdong provinces of China. And it it's colored perfectly for the vegetation and foliage there. And then we have the eyelash viper. I'm gonna take a quick drink. I just realized we're in an ad break. I'm so sorry about that. The eyelash viper exists in Central and South America. And usually when you see like a bright golden snake in a zoo, that this is usually the one. Eyelash vipers are very common. And they tend to get shown off in zoos. Um it also has tiny little 
horns that they call eyelashes. And I absolutely love them. They are so adorable. And you can see the pits around its nose where it can sense heat. The eyelash viper is a pit viper. It just doesn't have pit viper in a name. And, and like, it's such a pretty color. They usually only come in, come in like gold, stuff like that, if I remember correctly. Unless this one, those, yeah, they, they tend to be golds. And they are one of the smaller pit vipers. They, they are not a big, they are not a big snake. They grow to be about roughly, apparently 27 inches long for the females and can get up to 32 inches for the males, which is 12 inches and a foot. Roughly about almost three feet long. Or for those using centimeters, males are between 55 to 82 centimeters and females are about 69 centimeters. But yeah, they, they are all that really pretty golden color. They're cute. I love eyelash vipers. But, oop. Sorry, my, my wrist keeps going off because my mom keeps messaging me. Why is this doing that? There you go. The snake I picked to win the Viperidae is this spiny bush viper just because it's so cute i mean i love it and you can you can see better now how like the speckling in its eyes the speckling in its eyes is just it's so nice i could stare at this snake for hours like if it wasn't for the fact that this snake is like super venomous and could likely kill me with its toxins I would stare at the snake all day. So it's a good thing that we have pictures of this snake so I can stare at pictures of the snake all day. But th that's why it's the winner of this category. It's just super, super pretty. Like it is super, super pretty. And next it is the families or the, yeah, the families that are actually pretty closely linked. And that's a python day and a boa day. Pythons and boas are non-venomous and some of the largest snakes in the world. Pythons are poached for their meat and skin, but can carry diseases like salmonella and leptospirosis. Uh, both things that you don't want. Salmonella is easy to treat, though. Uh, the boa family contains the green anaconda, which is the heaviest snake in the world. Not the longest, the heaviest. Both kill by constriction, with two differences. Pythons cause cardiac arrest, and boas asphyxiate. So that's one of the two, uh, one of the ways you can tell them apart. Even though, like, just from looking at something, you can't tell if it's having cardiac arrest or being suffocated. Or in this case, asphyxiated. Interchangeable. Uh, we are starting out with the Woma python. Also known as the Ramses python and Cyan python. They exist in Australia. Uh, pythons and boas tend to be a lot more chill they some of them don't mind being handled by people with police unless you're trained to and you have to like move them don't touch wild snakes next is the burmese python and i only picked two colorings of it P burmese pythons have a range of colors uh the yellows and the ones next to it the kind of grayish brown ones are the most common ones that you see pet wise. They exist in Southeast Asia and are one of the most common pythons to wind up as pets. But people don't realize that they get so big, they can get so heavy. They are a smart, smart snake. They, they will escape their enclosures if you give them a chance. So a lot of people will dump their snakes, and that's why they've become an invasive species in Florida. Uh, pythons are not native to Florida, especially Everglades, and they are currently killing um, some 
birds and stuff like that that are already like pretty vulnerable on the list of endangerment. So you will see people get paid to actually go after these snakes. Some are caught alive, but like a lot of them do end up unfortunately dead to make sure that the environment is spared from their invasion. So if you want a snake, be a responsible snake owner. Only take on snakes that you think you can handle. If you don't think you can handle something as big as a Burmese python, do not get a Burmese python. Just because they look pretty doesn't mean they make good pets. Next after this, we have the Boalene's python. Also known as a black python. Look at that. Look at that very pretty black against white. That is so pretty. They exist in New Guinea. I think they look very regal. I would love to pet one, but um, I'm not going to New Guinea just to pet a snake. Next, we have the scrub python, also known as the amethystine python. Because of its coloring, it looks like an amethyst almost. They exist in Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. New Guinea and Papua New Guinea are technically two different countries. It also looks like a very pettable snake. After this, we have the, the Albertus python. They also exist in New Guinea. And yes, um, that is a legit picture of one. They do have a rainbow coloring in the light. They have um, refractive scales that let light bounce off of them. And that's actually a very, very smart way to like go around to brush and stuff like that. Cause like, it's gonna be very confusing to critters who are like looking for a specific like coloring in something that's moving. If you have refractive scales, that's not only gonna throw off light differently, it's also gonna throw off heat on your body differently. So it's, it's a really good hunting mechanism. And then we have the black headed python, a very, very easy, reason to see why they're called the black-headed python. They're so cute. They exist in Australia. Then we have the children's python. They exist in northern Australia. Some of them are tiny. Uh, some of them are big. Uh, and as I put it, just little guy. See how big does the children's python get? Because there's pictures of people just like straight up holding them. They're, they're like, they can go up to three to five feet. Uh, and apparently depending on local locality and polymorphic variant. But why are they called children's python? Oh, they are named after John George children. But yeah, still, he's just a little guy. At that, we have the spotted python. Look at that beautiful speckling on its body. Absolutely love it. It's also known as the Eastern Small Blotch Python, or as the Eastern Children's Python, and they are in Australia and New Guinea. But just, ah, I love the coloring on it. It's it's perfect for the environments it's in. Next, we have the Owen Pelly Python. Which just look at that head. Oh, that it has that's a very regal looking snake. I love it. It's it's so cool. They exist in northern territories of Australia. A lot of Australians. Um I I love this. And they have two taxonomical names. I could not find a reason why they have two taxonomical names, but uh it, it's both the same snake. And I love it. It's so pretty. After that, we have the Timor Python. Just, it's so pretty. It's, it's got the very, very dark brown upper body and underneath, it's just like kind of a whitish yellow. Oh, excuse me. They exist in the Southeast Asia. Uh, I think literally in the Timor area. Um, yeah, look, they have a pink tongue. A lot of pythons and other snakes have like dark tongues, and this one just has a little pink tongue. It, it's adorable. Then we have what's called the reticulated python. It is the longest snake in the world. It exists in South and Southeast Asia. 
Um, I know some people will get reticulated pythons as pets, but just like the Burmese python. If you don't think you can handle a big ass snake, don't get a big ass snake. Let's see how long the reticulated python can get. Cause like the, 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 these are some very 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 big snakes. They they are a gigantic. Let's see. Um, the longest reticulated python has. Um, I guess apparently gone up to twenty one feet. So that's six point five meters. With a rate weight range up to 75 kilograms or 165 pounds. But remember, green anacondas are still heavier. Uh, apparently, ones that are that are bigger than 19 feet 8 inches are rare. And the Guinness Book of World Records states that the longest Reticulate python was 22 feet and 10 inches and weighed 130 pounds and one ounce. And it had not eaten for three months. Supposedly, somebody in uh, our Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania Zoo had one that was 28 feet. And it's accepted as the largest accurately measured snake. But 28 feet, that's 8.7 meters. They are huge these are not tiny snakes so if you don't think you can handle a gigantic snake do not get a gigantic snake also um something that i didn't mention about pythons but pythons will sometimes to keep their prey from moving around too much bite them and then they start coiling themselves around so yeah, don't piss off the snakes. They they might not have venomous bites, but they have mouths mouths full of razor sharp teeth. Don't mess with the snakes. Leave them alone if you don't know how to handle them. Please, I will keep saying that. But yeah, the winner for Python Day, because I split up Boa Day and Python Day, is going to be the Burmese Python. Just because I have, I actually have personal experience with Burmese pythons. I have gotten to hold them. I've gotten to pet them. I knew somebody who was very, a very responsible owner. And they had a Burmese python named Snickers. And Snickers was a very chill snake. That's how I was told how to handle a snake. If I ever had to handle one. And at that time I was 13 years old. And that snake, I was already like 5'6 at that time. That snake was longer than I was tall. So, so they are very long snakes, but Snickers was very chill. Unfortunately, Snickers got out of his cage one day and decided to hide behind a fridge. And snakes can't handle the cold very well. The cold immobilizes them, like it, it slows them down. They, they are critters that prefer like warmer climates. He didn't make it very long. So rip the snickers but yeah if you if you if you do not secure their hatches the pythons will get out they do not like being contained hello welcome to chat i hope you like snakes we've already covered a lot of them but yes um also if you are going to handle a snake one one big thing about snakes just like with turtles wash your hands afterwards and if you have to wash your clothes afterwards snakes hang out in their own feces in their cages they, they'll they like slide around on that stuff uh you don't want salmonella now that's like one of the biggest things that they snakes snake poop will carry just like with turtles is high risk of salmonella yes nope ropes danger like danger noodles uh and all those different names i i love snakes they're great we're currently it, finishing up the Python category. We already covered Colubridae, Alapidae, and Viperidae. So we are on the non-venomous snakes. And we just uh, we just went through the Pythons. And my favorite was the Burmese out of those. 
Next, we are moving on to boas, which the anacondas are all boas. So we are starting out with the Bolivian anaconda. It exists in the Beni area of Bolivia, so it's also known as the Beni anaconda. Look at that pretty, pretty kind of dark greenish, foresty greenish coloring. Perfect for slithering on the ground. It's cute. Uh, if, if something you'll notice with anacondas is that um, with how they un with how big they are and how they unhinge their jaws, they look like they have like a, almost a little waddle underneath their mouths, like under their throats. That that's because they can get they can swallow such big prey compared to some of the other snakes. Anacondas can swallow some big things. After that, we have the yellow anaconda or the Paraguayan anaconda. It exists in southern South America. It's more of a yellowish color and it's got more almost leopard spots on it compared to kind of just like splotches that the oblivion anaconda has. Also not a small snake, but still not, not the biggest. Next we have the dark spot anaconda, which look at those big dark spots. It exists in northeastern South America. It's also known as the Shawansay's anaconda. Also not the biggest one, but still pretty hefty. And then we have the green anaconda, which is the heaviest snake. Which let, let's see how 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 heavy can a green anaconda get? If a reticulated python can get up to 165 pounds, a green anaconda, how how heavy? Can they get? Let's see, green, green anacondas. Uh, 176 pounds is the average heaviest. And the biggest and heaviest one to have ever been like found and killed was in 1937, shot in Guyana. And was claimed to have measured 19 feet 4 inches or 5.9 meters and weighed 163 kilograms or 359 pounds. Like 359 pounds. Imagine a snake at 359 pounds. That is a very, very, very heavy snake. Like... There, there's some bodybuilders that can't even lift anything that heavy. And there have been reports, and, and, and like only one, only one singular verified report of a green anaconda eating somebody. Like a human being. Usually you find things like deers and stuff in their stomach. Um, this, this snake exists in South America and Trinidad. Trinidad is a Caribbean island. Um... So I know where I'm never going. I was never going to go to South America in the first place because there's so many parasites there that just, oh god, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of parasites. I'm really not. But yeah, the, the green anaconda just, it, it's, it's big. Oh no, I have not talked about Snake Island. No, no, I was uh, going to do a little bit about that at the end. I'm just right now covering snakes that I like. But yeah, Snake Island. Oh, Snake Island is... A lot of just, snakes are so fascinating. Snakes are just so great. Let me bring up Snake Island real fast so I do not forget to talk about that. I will not be able to pronounce its actual name. Um, I don't speak Spanish. I speak German and, and English. I can try though. But yeah, um, this is a snake that uh, B or Waning Bellator reminded me of existing. It is called the Iradian Sand Boa. It is the last one I'm going to cover in what's known as the Common Boa family, despite the fact it's tiny. Common Boas are usually 5 feet or longer, but the Arabian Sand Boa can only, it only usually grows up to 27 inches, but it's, it's, it's a Common Boa. But yeah, look at how derpy it is. It exists in the Arabian Peninsula in Iran, or Iran. They also know as Jay Carr's San Boa and just look at how derpy it is. Just it is. It's so <laughs> derpy and cute. 
So yeah, of, of course I had to pick that one as the winner for the, the Boa family. Just look at it. It's so... <laughs> I found a picture of it peeking out of the sand. It's... I, I put down Arabian Sand Python. I meant Arabian Sand Boa. Like, I think I forgot to erase Python name, but it's an Arabian Sand Boa. Just, yeah, head empty, no thoughts. It's, it's very much that. But yeah, let me take a drink real fast. After this, these are just the. I need to remember to say miscellaneous. I keep wanting to say miscellaneous. It's miscellaneous snakes. Uh, these snakes are not in the previous mentioned categories. Uh, most of them, like the dwarf boas, are usually smaller than five feet, so it's not included in the common boa family. So that's why they're not in the boa day family. Um. And like the fact that said Arabian boas are considered common despite being 15 inches. One of them has been up to 27 inches though. Um, but yeah. Snakes are cool. C the categorizations for them are really weird. Um, but yeah, we have a few more snakes to cover that are not in the big families. And we are starting out with the Sunbeam Snake. It is also known as the Xenopeltis. Exists in Southeast Asia, and it is the only snake in its like family and genus. It is the only one. There is no subspecies. It is just this guy. And like with the Dialberta snake, it has refractive scales, so like you see really pretty coloring as it goes around. This next one, the Puget Sound garter snake. This in the Puget Sound area of Washington and up to Vancouver Island of Canada and along the coast, like right up there. So like by Point Roberts and all that. Um, well, the Sunbeam Snake and the Puget Sound Garter Snake are non-venomous. They're not, they're not harmful to people. The Puget Sound Garter Snake I have personal experience with because I live in the state of Washington. Uh, one of my cats decided one day to bring home a snake. Dropped it and it decided to slither into our garage. I don't know if I ever left our garage. All I know is that it, it, it got away from the cat because that the cat surely just wanted to bring us a present and it wanted to bring us a live snake as a present. So as much as I love that cat hatcher, he was not the smartest cat a lot of the times. He was actually 90% stupid. But yeah, he, he just he brought us a snake. And they're very cute. If you see, see, it's it's got kind of bluish scales with the black coloring. They're adorable. But you don't see a lot of them. They're not that common. Garter snakes, um, they're they're small snakes, so they they tend to be able to hide very well. But they're cute. Oh, excuse me. Next, we have the California red-sided garter snake. As its name suggests, they exist in California. Yes, they are that brightly colored. They are the really pretty red, blue, and black. Uh, I'm going to hop on over to the other side for the San Francisco garter snake. They exist in the San Mateo and Santa Cruz counties of California. A lot more muted, but still, they, they're in the same, well, genus, the Thamnophis. Gar uh, the Puget Sound Garter Snake is also in that same genus. They're so cute. Down left at the bottom, we have one of the confusing snakes. Oh, one moment. I gotta clear my throat. Anyways. Um, it looks like a worm, but it's not a worm. It's called the European Blind Snake. They are cave snakes. Now, that's why they look like that. But it looks like a worm. They exist in the Balkan Peninsula, the Aegean Islands, and range from Cyprus to Afghanistan. And yes, they just look like a pink worm. But they are a snake. They're insect eaters. So they, they're completely harmless to humans. It just looks like a really weird pink worm. After that, we had the white-nosed blind snake, which yes, that is a snake. It is small. Exists in Colombia, Curacao, Panama, and Venezuela. I was very confused looking at it first, going, is that actually a snake? Yes, it is a snake. That that's that that's actually a snake. 
Um, it looks almost like a parasite, but I assure you, it is it is of the danger noodle variety. After this, we have Cope's False Coral Snake. It is a non-venomous snake. Wait. Yes, it's not venomous. Uh, there's several different false coral snakes, but a lot of those fall into the Colubridae family. This one is an extent of it. It's, it's like a lower genus of it. So it's far enough away from the other coral snakes to not be considered an actual coral snake, hence the name false coral snake. It exists in South America. And absolutely just adorable. Below that, we have the Anamalai wood snake. They exist in the western ghats of India. They have sort of refractive scales. A belligerent zip tie. I don't, I don't think I have. I, that sounds familiar. Uh. I have gone over so, so many snakes. Oh, yes. Oh. Okay, so the, a parrot snake. That, that's what they're called. I unfortunately didn't add the parrot snake to my list. Because, um, like, I, I already had so many bright green snakes. Yeah, I forgot. Like, I was like, I, I, know, the, I know belligerent zip tie. I just saw that. Because, like, I was looking up parrot snakes, but, like, it was in a category where I already had, like, a whole bunch of green snakes. So, I'm like, ah, oh, parrot snake, unfortunately, you're going to have to be left off, despite the fact that you're so cute. So, it almost made it. But, there's so many bright green snakes. I love my bright green snakes. There's just so many of them. Oh, Yeah. Uh, the Anamalai, uh, sort of refractive scales. It's cute. All the pictures of it. It just, it looks like a, it looks like a gentle little friend. Next is the Dusky Dwarf Boa. This is the dwarf boas they're talking about. Or the Cuban Wood Snake or Cuban Giant Dwarf Boa. Literally just exists in Cuba. It's, it's, it's a boa. It, they're not that big. They're under five feet. They don't go over five feet, so... They are truly a dwarf boa, which is why I don't understand why the Arabian sand boa is in the common boa family, but this guy isn't a dwarf boa. I, I'm not going to pretend to know what herpetologists think. At, uh, at the bottom, we have a two-lined black shield tail snake. Now, I had four shield tail snakes that I want to add. They all look so similar. I was not going to dedicate a slide just to shield tail snakes. Because, like, they barely have any differences. They're all they're all in the same old genus. They're all Melanophidium. And they all pretty much exist in the same area. The Western Ghats of India or India in general. They are very cute. But, like, very similar coloring. The pretty blues, the grays. I think one of them has red on it. One of them has more white on it. So there's, like, not a huge difference coloring-wise with the shield tail snakes. So I just uh, picked the two-lined one. Which, it has very pretty blue on it. I absolutely love the color blue. Oh yeah, the miscellaneous snake that I picked to win from this. Of course, because, well, it's near and dear to the place I'm currently living in. And that's the Puget Sound garter snake. It, it's cute. It's adorable. It is. It's very snake. Um, Not one I, I still would not pick it up because like I don't want to get bit by a snake. The far we take about talk about Snake Island. Things to remember about snakes. Leave them alone. Especially venomous ones like rattlesnakes. Don't pick them up unless you have training to and you have a reason to pick them up. If you have one in your yard, the best call animal control, if you think it's a venomous one, or some kind of local herpetologist like a reptile keeper or something. Leave your pets inside if you see a snake in your yard. Uh, they're, they're like, like, especially if you see a Burmese python in your yard. Burmese pythons have been known to eat people's pets. 
so leave your pets inside if you see a snake. Don't be like, oh, yeah, my pit bull could take on this snake. No, no, leave the poor snake alone. Call somebody to take care of it. Just, yeah. And like, snakes are just trying to live their life like you. Some of them are where they shouldn't be. Those are the ones that you're just like, um, yeah, animal control. Um, th this snake is in the wrong place. Could you please, could you please give it a new home? Just, just call them. Also, if you hear a rattle, back away and leave the baby alone. And my baby, I, I, I mean the snake. Let leave the snake alone. Leave the rattlesnake alone. They will lunge at you if you get too close. And despite what people think, snakes don't have infinite venom. Snakes need to bite and then back away. Venom has to come back. They're, they're like people, like, um, actually wait. They have a finite amount of venom at a time. They have venom glands that have to refill. So if, if you see somebody get bit by a snake, unless it's a snake with like, the snake just has a bad attitude and wants to bite over and over again. Most of them just bite once and back away. Some of them will bite multiple times, but that that is not common. But yeah, if you see snakes, just just leave them alone. They're just they're just trying to be, just trying to be like you. They're just trying to vibe. This world is cruel, and snakes are our friends. As long as you treat them like a friend and don't get too close to them. If you are in an area where you suddenly find like a snake in your house, again, call somebody to remove it. Don't try and move it yourself. You don't know if it's venomous. You don't know if it's going to bite. You don't know what it's going to do. And if you have pets in your house, uh, move your pets. Put them in, put, lock them in a room so a snake can't get to them. Just be nice to them and you don't get bit. And remember that if you keep snakes as a pet, Please be a responsible pet owner. Don't dump your snake out just because they get too big or you don't feel like feeding them anymore. It's a huge responsibility. It's like owning a cat or a dog, except um, unlike cats and dogs, this, this is not a pet you want just running around your house. This is a pet that has to be more closely monitored. They also have to have like heating lamps and stuff like that. They have had very specific food. So if you are going to keep one, please study about it, read up on it and pick a snake that you think you can handle. Not one you think looks cool and do it in a legal mean. Don't go for illegal pet trades. Don't go for Craigslist. Don't buy, don't buy any pets off Craigslist, please, please just stay away from Craigslist pets. But yeah, I'm going to switch to my just chat and screen so I can turn off my slideshow. And we're going to talk about Snake Island. Yep. Got to move some things around. Oh. Thank you for the follow. I totally forgot the meowing was back to being a thing here. No, seriously, talking about snakes like this, I do definitely need to make one for sharks, because, uh, that's, yeah. Yeah, I, Florida just has way too many pythons, not just Burmese, but there's some reticulated pythons that have been released there, too. I know that, like, it, it, it's a mess. It really is. But yeah, Snake Island. Uh... Isla da Quemada Grande? I'm just going to call it Snake Island. It is off the coast of Brazil in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, Let's see how many... It is not a very big place. It is, it is tiny. Damn, that, that is a small island. Let's see, how many different types of snakes do they have? 
uh, apparently previously estimated to have had a had a population of 430,000 snakes, but recent estimates are much, much smaller. Like, apparently, there's about between 2,000 and 4,000 golden lance heads. And that's just... That's, yeah, yeah. Did you mention inbreeding in the article? That that inbreeding for snakes, inbreeding for anything is bad, but that means they don't have enough of a genetic diversity. Um. And yeah, I actually had golden lance heads in my um slides. I I love golden lance heads. Oh man, they're labeled critically in danger, but there's like not much we can do about that. Like as people move into the places where snakes are, they're going to start tearing down where the snakes live. They're going to start killing off foods for the snakes. This happens pretty much everywhere. Like it, it, like one of, there's a tiger called the South Chinese tiger that is pretty much functionally extinct because of people moving into their areas and um, hunting them for like medicinal purposes. There's like only a couple of them left. And this is slowly what's happening to things like the golden lance head. As more people move into those areas and they start claiming it as human habitable areas and stuff, we're going to see lots of lots of animals become extinct in our lifetime it, it's sad and i don't want the golden lance heads become extinct they're, they're useful for what they are they they help balance the ecosystem like not the invasive species the invasive species are destroying ecosystems but for the ecosystems that they're natively to they're a huge help so, like, as much as I know people want to move out and, ex like, put their homes in new places and stuff like that, they also have to remember that there's animals there that were there first. And we're displacing them. So, I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years or so, unless initiative is taken... That the golden lance head on Snake Island is going to become what is known as functionally extinct. There's going to be way too much inbreeding for it to be able to survive that. Because uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that inbreeding with some animals can shorten their lifespan. Because like you, you start getting issues that basically make their quality of life non-existent it's kind of like inbreeding with people where you notice that like their intelligence drops and stuff like that the, the more closely people are related it's kind of like that with animals too it, it's inbreeding can kill them so it, it makes me sad to see that they're considered critically endangered i don't know what we can do about that because like how are you going to bring in genetic diversity to this species that has no subspecies. The golden lance head is its own species. There are no subspecies. And if you bring in a subspecies, technically you make it a different type of animal. So we can't go that route either. So yeah, it, it, it's sad to see. Like... I don't want to see any animals go extinct. I don't want to see any snakes go extinct. I, I love snakes. Oh yeah, the, there's there's very little we can do. It is up to the Brazilian government to try and save the snakes. Um, and I kind of hope that they do do a part to at least like find as much genetically diverse parts of population so they can lower the amount of inbreeding but that would mean capturing and breeding the snakes in captivity which is its own issue because like if you take the snakes from the area and you breed them in like labs and stuff like that 
they won't know anything about where they're supposed to be. And like, you would have to like reintroduce them slowly. And that doesn't always work, especially if they're used to getting fed by humans. They might go into human areas thinking, hey, human area equals food. So it, it, it comes with its own issues, but that's the only way I can see them bringing a snake population of Snake Island back up to healthy level is capturing and finding as much genetic diversity as possible and hopefully being able to reintroduce the snakes in a way where they don't hang out around humans, but that's going to be very difficult to do. So yeah, we'll have to see what happens with Snake Island. But yeah, like 2,000 to 4,000 snakes of one variety is, despite the fact that me saying that the island is small, for golden lance heads, which are not that big, that is a very small population. They're not a territorial snake. They, they just go wherever there's food. So, like, they don't have territory fights and stuff like that. So, they, you, you would think that the, the number would be bigger, but unfortunately it's not. So, we'll see what happens. But yes, snakes are great. I absolutely love snakes. I like seeing them in zoos, but I also feel sad for the ones that are in zoos because it's like, oh, what are you doing there? But um, the zoos around this area, the snakes that they have uh, generally are snakes that are safe from pet trades. Like, um, ex example is, it's not a snake, but there's a bald eagle that's kept at a zoo that I go to. And the only reason that there's a bald eagle is because it was illegally captured and kept as a pet. So it is too used to human beings to function out in the wild. So that's like a couple of the animals that they have were kept illegally as pets and cannot function in the wild anymore. So yeah, it's, it's sad. And apparently there's several snake islands, but I think they're just named that, um, for their shape. The only true one is in Brazil. Like literally there, there's a snake island in Nanaimo, which is up by Vancouver. And it doesn't have any snakes. It only has harbor seals. So why'd you call it Snake Island? But yeah, I love snakes. I hope you guys appreciate them. Or if you don't appreciate them, at least um, respect them. Snakes are part of the ecosystem. They're, they're needed. Even if you look at them and go, oh no, they are the scariest things in the world. It, it, they're, 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 they're just there to live their life. They're there to vibe. The only animals that I would, or only critters, I would say, please kill all of them right now. If I could have my one wish of getting rid of one singular thing in the world, it would be hornets. Hornets terrify me. I, especially Japanese hornets. Oh God. Oh no, 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 no. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. That would be literally the only critter that I would say, hey, please get rid of. But unfortunately hornets, despite what people say, uh, they do serve a purpose. So do wasps. So, and I don't mind bees, but like wasps and hornets, they have a purpose. Unfortunately, they're just terrifying looking. Probably the only thing that bothers me about snakes that has like bothers me in general is I'm not, I'm not huge into vor. And I know that snakes eat their, eat their prey. They, they vor their prey. And yes, their prey is dead, but it's still like, wow, swallowing it whole. Um, that, that's probably the only thing that, that kind of skews me out about snakes. But otherwise I fucking love them. They, they are so fascinating there's so many different types of them the fact that some have like a refractive scales where you can see like a rainbow of color on them like the alberta snake i love that they're just so cool and i will always appreciate snakes and i'm, I'm glad like my my husband used to be afraid of them and he's learned about them and he's actually the one who came up with the subject. So if you see the pinned comment, which hopefully it's still pinned, about like um, subjects you want to talk about, my husband's the one who's like, hey, talk about snakes. I, I will 
pretty much talk about anything. Hell, like like I said, I will do one about sharks. Sharks are my number one favorite critter. Sea critter. Cats are my number one land animal. Yeah, I just... It, it, it's Snakes are so cool. And if you're afraid of snakes and you were here... Why? Why? But even if you're afraid of snakes, I hope you think some of them look cute. Like the Arabian sandball, I've got that derpy little dude. It's just head empty, no thoughts. Oh yeah, uh, like I said at the beginning of the stream, it's not too long of a stream. I'm having heart issues right now, so I'm glad I this wasn't a super long stream. I, I'm going to have to go and rest, but uh, next Friday I will have a review about one of my favorite mangas that I have read in a, read this while. Um, it's going to be Dungeon Meshi. I read that. I hyper-focused on that for like two, two and a half days. And I want to talk about it. It's it's so good. I have not watched the anime because I don't have Netflix, but the, the manga, manga is just absolutely just... It's brilliant. And I want to talk about it. And I might have to split up Dungeon Meshi into two parts because there's so much to talk about. There's so many characters to talk about. There's just so much to talk about. Oh uh, yeah, if if you if you have any suggestions, I, I have to Google form. You can put things in. Or just like I I, I have Twitter. I have Blue Sky. I did a did a multi for both of those. Um, I don't think I have open messaging for TikTok, so I think that's one of the ones where you have to friend and then message. TikTok's weird, but yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll have a very good day, or good night. I don't know what time zone you're in. I'm gonna go rest, and hopefully not have to be hospitalized, because this is not fun. It's 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 not that bad yet. I'm trying not to make it worse. So yeah. Hopefully Monday I will have a lot more energy as we go back into Horizon Zero Dawn. So yeah. I will JP. Yeah, it, it's it's just a lot of stress. It's just a lot of stress. I already promised Cell and B I'd go AWOL for the rest of the night to rest. Oh yes, thank you JP. I hope you like the snakes. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Have a good night.